I should let you know what I am not here to do. And one of the first things that I am not here to do is I'm, I'm not here to waste your time. That's I, I value time way too much. It's probably my first thing ever because, like I said, not many of us make it this far. So I promise, if only if you allow me, I will not waste your time. And I am also not here to make you better. I don't, I don't do that shit. I don't make people better. Um, <laughs> why? Because you yourself make yourself better, not anyone else. You yourself decide to make yourself better. So I'm not here to do that. I, I don't do that. Lastly, um, I am not here to be your first source of motivation. I, I, I hope, and, pro and probably some of you did come to this talk to maybe receive some kind of motivation or inspiration. A lot of people think I'm very inspiring and all that cool <laughs> stuff. But I'm not, I'm not here to be your first source. Why? Because, again, you yourself are your own motivator. You, if you're motivated by someone, it's because you allow yourself to be motivated by them. So, you should be your first source of motivation. Okay? With that being said, what the heck am I here to do? I should let you know that one too. Um, I am here to share my knowledge, my, my own knowledge. The, what I've gained, or at least some of the things that I've gained throughout my 20 years of being alive, um, I, I am here to share that with you. I am also here to share a story. Maybe not one story, but I got a couple. Um, so I, I, I am here to share that with you. Uh, I am also here to remind you of your worth. I say remind you because at some point, maybe, hopefully, um, you guys still, you were the shit. There's something, you're just like, uh, I got it going for myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm here to remind you that you're worthy and you are the shit. So, um, and if you, if you never felt like that, tonight may be the night. I am also here to allow you to witness the power of deciding to always be a winner. Always. And um, why is that? For the, oh, by a raise of hand, for those of you who know what the term taking an L means, who knows that? <laughs> Daily. <laughs> for those of you, who's taking an L or a couple L's? <laughs> okay, alright, alright. So, <laughs> for those of you who do not know what taking an L means, it's basically um, taking a loss, losing. Um, I'm here to kind of change that one around and say, and L can be for learning. And with knowledge, you're always a winner. That's, at least in my eyes, and I hope you guys can see that too. So how about some L's for learning, all right? Um, so let's get started and talk a little bit about myself. So um, as I said, I am Naomi Sed Rodriguez Jose. Where do I come from? I was born in the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, the capital. Um, so that little small island next to Haiti and North Florida, as you guys don't know. Um, I came here to the States when I was about seven years old. Um, my mom was living here, my father was in, in the Dominican Republic. And I, I came here when I was seven along with my brother and we, um, well, she's right there by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, we lasted here for a couple of years. I, I'm not too sure, I'm not sure how many, but two or three years, and we got to, we had it back. How many? Three? All right, got it. Thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> three years, then we headed back to the, to the DR because um, my parents decided to share the, their time. And um, I think we're lucky enough to do that. Not, not many people, not many, I think, children or parents allow that for their children. So went back to the Metro College three, four years, came back, back and forth, and um, but I've been living here in the United States, in the Bronx, um, mainly um, <laughs> representing, uh, for since I was about 11 or 12 years old. And um, yeah, I've been here in the United States since then. I am currently studying global and international studies and um, communication and social interaction. Crazy long. 
and I very much enjoy every bit of what my major has to offer. Um, I truly enjoy learning about every single thing and I'm very passionate about it and you'll find out why in a little bit. Um, I'm fluent in Spanish because that's the native um, tongue that I'm in her blood. My second language is English. Um, I speak a little bit of Italian. Don't come to me going on crazy because I'm, I'm not that good at it. So <laughs> I can, I can like, hold a decent conversation. Um, but I'm more fluent in Portuguese. Um, although I've been studying Italian for like probably four or five years in Portuguese for like some. Portuguese is, is very similar to Spanish, so I guess that's why. Um, I should tell you that I have two addictions. It's not drugs or weed or whatever the heck. It's <laughs> an addiction to, to learning and new experiences. I, I crave it every single day. It's what I love to do. And I think that very much came from traveling. And um, my, my first ever travel, um, besides the United States, was to China during high school, my senior year in high school, uh, on a two-week Chinese exchange program. I don't know how my mom sent me over there, but she did. It happened. Um, then came, after that trip, and I'll explain more why um, China may be important, and I'll explain what the, the whole trip was about later on. But after China, after spending two weeks there, I I was I actually became really addicted to learning about um, other people and other cultures and why people do the things they do and how they do them. It, it became crazy, like oh my god, it's amazing. That I'm, I'm here and then there's like crazy amount of other different people and on the other side of the world. So I told myself before coming to Oslo, I said I will be going to a new country every year. How? I don't know. It's gonna happen. But, um, so I've, I've kept that, and so my freshman year I visited Argentina, Buenos Aires, um, through a quarter course, uh, one week. Then I went to Benin, um, crazy eye-opening, beautiful country, and it's located in West Africa, for those of you who do not know. Um, two weeks there, then this, this past year, this past summer, I was in Italy for a month, getting my Italian credit. Um, then... This past January, I went to Costa Rica, but that was just about about a week or so, and it was just for vacation for myself. Um, well, they're all for myself, but, you know, relax. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, I recently got back from Nicaragua, um, in Central America. I was, um, doing, I was volunteering there, helping teach English to the students. And soon enough, I'll be heading to Brazil. I'll be studying there um, this upcoming fall. So I'm, Hella nervous, but I'm really, really excited. So, yeah, that's this is who I am, part of. And I thought I'll I'll get a good laugh out of this. So, <laughs> just me, my diving back at my, my hometown, sucking on some icy thing. Call it tamarindo, I think. Some food, I don't know how to say it in English. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry. What's it? Tamarindo. Yeah. Tamarind? Oh, it's not. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not that different. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I've divided this, this talk into four parts, um, experience, learn, share, and inspire. LC is something I created, um, 2014, 2015. Uh, it was a, a way I, for me to share what I was going through with um, childhood and was also traveling. In, in 2014 is when I, I headed over to China. And um, so since China, I really became, I, I wanted to share with people like, hey, I went to China, I did this, I saw this, this is what I got from it. And so I created it, I was one day sitting in my room and I was just like, well, let's see, I, I, I like experiences, I like learning, it's, I like sharing, and I, people tell me I'm inspirational, so. I like this so, so those four words just happened to become Elsie, and um, so I just I decided to divide this into these four sections. Experience. I will be discussing with you or describing you five of my most defining moments in my life so far. Um, these, these five stories that I'm going to tell, very personal to me. First time 
I've shared it with such a large crowd. Um, it's one or two are going to be tough to get them to get through, but I'm I'm very excited. And I'm excited for you guys to hear about them because I'm I'm sure it's going to help at least one of you in this room, and that is why I share what I share. So I'll be telling five of those. First one, China. So why was China so such a big deal in my life? Um, as I said, it was my first trip aside to the United States. Um, so it was my senior year in high school. I I, was, I went on a two-week Chinese exchange program, meaning I went over there. I lived for the host family, and after I I got the two weeks done in China, I came back, and then my host sister. So I went there for two weeks. First week we toured um, two cities. Not that any of you probably know, you probably know Beijing, but you may not know Hangzhou, which is a, one of the greenest cities I've ever been to. We toured those two cities. Then um, the second week we headed off to Nanjing, which is where I got to live with my host um, family. Host family consisting of my host sister, if you guys know, one child policy in China at that time, um, then her mom and her boyfriend. Beautiful. I never thought I would be able to Chinese, like an actual, you know, straight up Chinese person. It's an amazing culture, and I, if you ever get the chance to go, go to China, don't even think about it. Just go to China. And let me just tell you, Chinese food here, it's not Chinese food. It's, it's <laughs> not Chinese food. It's Americanized, very, extremely Americanized. I'm not sure what part of China it has inside, but, um, so yeah, I, I lived um, with my, my host sister. I, I went to school with her. Obviously didn't understand anything, but let me tell you, these people do, they do geometry or calculus without, they have no calculators. They do it straight up on board. I, I didn't understand anything, but I understood that they had no calculators. I was <laughs> whoa, I'm, I'm looking at numbers and I'm like, where, I'm literally looking up for the calculators. I'm like, where? Yo, America, you slay! What's going on? <laughs> so, um, I, I went to school with her. She took me places. It was it was cute, you know, nice. Um, and one thing, I, I, I think one thing that really stood out to me, obviously the Chinese culture, and the fact that before I went there, I had all these um, preconceptions about how the culture was and what they were about, or at least what I had seen here, here or stereotypes. And when I went to China, it was, I, I learned why they do the certain things they did and how they did them. And I really began to appreciate people. When I got back from China and I um, went back to the Bronx, I sat on the bus and I'm just, I remember taking the public transportation. I'm just like, yo, none of these people probably know what's out there. Like, I'm like, yo, Chinese people are dope. Like, they don't know that. So it, it just, I became really astonished and that's why I became addicted to learning about other people. Number two, yeah. my parents divorced. Um, so, 2015, um, I think it was what, two years ago? Um, when my parents decided to file for divorce and get it, you know, over with. Before then, they had been separated for about three years. Separated meaning we lived in the same house, but they didn't share a room. They were, we were all still in the same house. <coughs> I didn't, I mean, I knew they were separated. They, they weren't, it wasn't the same as it was before ever again. But if we were still in the same house, we shared, you know, same environment. It was pretty cool. So I never really um, kind of analyzed what it would be like when my father left the house. That's when it was like, shit, it's for you, man. Damn it. So, um. They divorced my, this was during my fall of 2015, yeah, 2015. Um, now it, was, it probably happened at, by the end of my um, semester. So I, I, it really didn't it hit me that much with classes and all that, so I didn't really struggle with that part. But when I got back home, it was, it was extremely difficult. I'm just like, you know, this is weird. My father's not at home. This is, it just felt weird. My relationship with my mom wasn't really the same. Um, I, like about four or three, or three months later, I met my boyfriend and then he moved in not too long into that. So I'm like, 
shit, man, stop. It's going, it's going way too fast for me. Like, hold up. So, I, I thought I was going to be fine. And I remember the same day I was leaving to Africa. Because Africa followed that, that year, 2016. And that same day was when it all just, I exploded. And it all just came out of me. Um, I was, I don't know, I, I had a lot of anger built up. And I was so upset about how my family was. I, I expected, I always envied when I was growing up. I, I envied, or at least when I came to the United States, because I think that's when things started to like, fall. I envied my friends who had, who would had like family traditions, or they would go out with their parents. Oh yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, my family was like that. Like, I wouldn't go out. And my family hearing this would probably be like, yo, they was like that. Like, but I never really expressed that. So, um, so yeah, so I was I was leaving for Benin. I that same day my fight was I just it just it, I was over it. I was I had a mental breakdown, sobbing and it was, eh, it was scary. Um, so I, I don't remember. I didn't want to deal with anything anymore. I, I I had suicide thoughts, but I wasn't really I didn't have any plan as to how I would go about it. All I knew was okay. How do people kill themselves? They jump off a bridge. They maybe cut themselves and they hang themselves, but I never was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. I didn't have a plan about it. I, I was over it. I didn't know how to handle it. That's what was so scary about it. It was, it was the first time ever that I had really experienced something like that. And before I had, I mean, I had a bunch of friends that had the worst parents, but I'm like, okay, that must suck. But their parents divorced at a very early age, like when they were really young. And I'm here in my life. What, um, 17 years old or 18 years old now, I'm experiencing it. I'm like, I should be able to handle this play. But honestly, the honest truth is, when you're scared of something, you're, it's just, it's the fact that you're going to be scared of it. You're going to be frightened by it. So because of that, I, I didn't want to deal with it. I, because I didn't know how to handle it, I wanted to just, just end whatever was happening. I didn't want to face it. And um, Benin was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Because me being not gone on that, Plane, I remember telling my counselor that she was actually on, on the flight with me, telling her, like, hey, I feel like this. Like, I'm... And she, she had one of my, my stories from back home. So that trip not happening, I'm not sure, I'm not too sure about what been here or not. Um, so that really kicked in hard for me. So I did the two weeks of Benin, amazing weeks, and I'm, I'm so happy it happened. Um, it's Dr. Bro, I actually went with her, that's why I'm like, <laughs> so uh, two weeks passed, and Go back home, weird vibes, it's like relationships. Not, I'm not feeling it too much, but my mom is probably the worst that's ever been. And so I'm just locked in my room 24 7, four walls. I didn't want to get out, I didn't want to eat. Just um, so I was just excited for school to come, just come back to a field um, five hours away. And I came I came to school thinking, yeah, I'll be fine because that's over there. Bullshit, man. That that should tra track me down. Like, oh, you're trying to run away? Uh, I'm back here. <laughs> so I became. I tried so hard to not think about it, but it was impossible. It was very very much impossible to not think about it. I would I would try to eat. I would think about it. I would shower. It was in my mind. I did fall. Asleep. I had trouble sleeping. Um, falling asleep at night, but throughout the day, I just, all I wanted to do was sleep. So in the hopes of waking up and not feeling whatever I was doing, but it just got worse. So, spring semester was, was my class. I had to drop the class because I just couldn't deal with anything like that. And it, was just, it was tough. And um, I decided to change my life around at some point when I woke up and I was like, this is bullshit. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I would wake up feeling like perfect, like, like purposeless. I, I felt like I had no purpose in life. I would walk around campus just like feeling dead, but here I am, like just walking around comfy and, and people think, you know, Liam is you know, tough, she's happy, she's she's cool, nah. That spring semester that spring semester was the toughest one. Twenty sixteen was my toughest year overall. Starting with that. So that's number two. DJ Cabot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Cabot. <laughs> Who knows who DJ Khaled is? Alright, oh, young people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, not too I'm not too sure of who he 
he is exactly what I think he raps, sings, I don't know. But I, pro producer, I just know that he said he's he's a the day creator kind of guy. Like the key to success, they don't want you to do this. They don't want you to breathe. They don't want you to go to classes. That kind of stuff. So number three, the day of my life. These three people are my favorite one. These three people are my favorite. One. So, following spring semester, after I I dealt with my parents' divorce, <coughs> I got a summer job. <laughs> oh man, good times! I got a summer job. I was basically mentoring um, students that I got out of um, high school, yeah, whatever they were. But I was mentoring them along with a group of other um, coworkers, about twelve of them, and there was something that I just this was coming back from early. I, I, I got back for, for the program and I, I, I wasn't feeling like people were acknowledging me. Um, and I, I didn't feel that my coworkers were like respecting me, you know? I just felt like I would walk into a room and I wasn't, I wasn't updated on whatever had happened. They wouldn't tell me, hey, this is happening, whatever. So I'm like, no, this is, this is iffy. Like, what's going on? And like previous to that, we had to take a, a course together in order to be trained for that. And, the, and, and the something similar happened in the course, and I, I had addressed it with them, and I told them. I even wrote a letter, because I'm a, I like to write letters. <laughs> so I, I told them, explaining them, like, hey, I'm, I'm not here to compete if that's what you think I am here. I don't do that shit either. So I'm not, I'm not here for that. And I, I remember telling them that during the course, and then when we got back for the actual program, it's just, it was still the same topic. Like, they just, they didn't like me. I, I felt it. We, like, you know when you get bad vibes? Come on. If, like, you know when you walk into a room and people don't fuck around with you? Like, you know, you feel it. So, that was me. These people, for some reason, I don't know why, because I was never at a personal level with them. For some reason, they didn't like me on me right here yesterday. For some reason. For the reason being that I, I still don't want to, to this day, but that's not my problem. That's theirs. So I, I I was kind of I want to know why again I was I was seeking for answers I was I was I kept asking like yo why why is that yo like what's going on like I've never had to deal with people not liking me only like I, I never in high school sophomore player people I was always this up and up the, the same person people enjoyed my I just like think I hope so enjoyed my 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 presence but like I never had problems never got into a fight never and I, I had to deal with this. I'm like, why is it? Not that it was important. I just I wanted to find answers. So I, I set up a meeting. We're meeting up, and I tell them again, hey, listen up. I'm not here to compete. I'm not here to compete because I'm here to share knowledge. I'm here to grow. I'm here to help you grow. I want to learn from you, and I want you to learn from me. That's what I'm here for. Straight up, I tell them. I'm not sure what's going on. I would appreciate any feedback um, that about anything that I've done. And so this is the feedback I got. These three people, my favorite people. First one, I don't know how to separate my personal life from my professional life. That's bullshit. That wouldn't be here right now if I didn't know how to do that. Trust me. And I, I tell that person straight up. That's BS. I, I, tell, I appreciate your comment. I, I appreciate the feedback. Feedback. That I got. I, I appreciate you like telling that to me. But I that's not true. <coughs> I I I, told, I I remember telling them if I did not know how to do that, I wouldn't be standing right here. I wouldn't be having this conversation with you because if I had to bring my personal problem to my professional life, that's a lot. Of, yo, that's a lot. So I I'm like yo. All right, first one. <coughs> Second one says I have too much pride. She was damn right. At it. Damn right. <laughs> And I told her, I'm like, you, you're damn right I have too much pride. Because I deserve to have all this pride. I deserve it because I'm here right now. I, I, I survived whatever I went through, and I deserve to have that much pride. If it, if it scares you that I have too much, do something about it. It's, I'm not doing anything to you. It's your problem. It's not mine. So, um, that was that. I'm like, too much pride. I'm saying I'm too prideful, and I walk on campus thinking I'm all that. Nah, man. <laughs> I'm not all that. 
I'll never be above anybody. And that's one thing, if I can let like this give me analyze. I'm, I wasn't there to be at anybody's level, because honestly, you will never be at my level. The same way I will never be at your level. Because this is your level, this is mine. You have your own level, and it's unique to yourself. I'm not trying to be a boss, there's no, 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 no. You have your own lane, and I have mine. Now we feed off from each other, and that's it, but I'm not trying to overcome anybody or be any less than anybody. Because I myself am my own level, so that's not what I, it's, it's not me. This last one is my most favorite. This person said to me, first ever person that I had said to me, I don't look up to you. Straight up bluntly. Straight up. Cause I, I, and I, I think one of the things the person said was, because I have too much leadership or whatever that is. And I, I remember just sitting down and I'm like, I see your mouth on me, I don't look up to you. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. I swallowed that one quick. I was like, okay, <laughs> shit. <laughs> and I, I told her, I don't know how I came up with this. Um, I don't know how, but this is the Naomi me. I basically told her, that's okay. You're fine. You don't, you don't have to look up to me. I, I, I would hope that you do, but you don't have to. You don't have to look up to me. That's fine. <laughs> shared an intimate conversation with that person other than hi and bye, how are you doing, good, bye, you know, never in my life. I knew nothing about that person. She knew nothing about my life. I, used, I think that she didn't know. I'm not sure if she stopped me or anything, which honestly, she does because I have Instagram stories, you know those? She watches some shits because my stuff is public and all I see her, her name, why are you watching my thing if you don't know to me? There's, there's something wrong with her now. Now with me. So that's three. It's getting good, huh? Ooh. All right. Yeah, y'all are tensed up. <laughs> um, this is not the boyfriend, girlfriend kind of army. For those of you who think that there's only one kind of army. It's, um, this is not one of those. This is, um, a friendship, but relationship that was, um, pretty strong and I, 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 uh, I would say intimate because we shared a lot of with, with each other's life. That I, I had to end because it was just extremely toxic for myself. This was last semester. And I, I, I'm not going to go into too much details. It's not only my story. Um, I had, for the first time ever, I had to, I experienced someone at the edge of end of their life, basically. As, we, as you guys, um, as I said before, I, I was suicidal at some point, so I, I resonated a lot with that person because I'm like, shit, I know what it's like to be there. I, I need to save this person. I need to get them out of there. Like, I, they cannot be there because it's it's hard. It's a horrible. It's horrible. It's horrific. So, literally, eye to eye, I almost witnessed someone take their own life. It's the scariest shit ever, man. Honestly, um, the whole moment was just flashing back. So, um, basically. This person and I um, had a common friend. The heartbreak wasn't the person I was suicidal, it was the common friend. The common friend and I had a um, very strong relationship. I, I, saw, I, I saw him as a family member, right? And um, it, was, it was very meaningful to me. So, me trying to save this person and worrying so much about their life, I almost forgot to save myself. Almost. You know when you give a person a hand and they want to take your whole arm? Yo, chill, man. What are you doing? She just gave you a hand. That's what happened. She wanted to see my arm. And I I had to stop. I'm like, nah, I'm not sinking into this. Hell no, that's not my battle. I did the best that I could. And that took a lot of time for me to realize that I did the best that I could. And that was leading that person 
to the resources that they needed to save themselves. But I wanted to do more because I, I saw that the person wasn't really, I don't know, they were still struggling with that. I'm like, yo, come on, man. You, you, you got to save yourself. Come on. And I, I, I felt the need to be there because I'm Naomi and I, I could do all the great things in life, but nah, I, I had to stop that. So, it being that, I, I, as I was trying to help this person out, the person end, ended up lying to me about important stuff because it was, it was their life, not mine. About important stuff about their life. So I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to save you when you just ride me. What kind of shit is that? That's, like, that's not, this is not for you. I'm trying to help you out. So I'm, I didn't understand why the person was lying to me. And the common friend also was involved in life. So I was like, okay, that's it. And I'm out. Bye. So that's what happened. I, I call it quits. I'm like, I'm not, I don't have to deal with this. This is, this is not my battle. I got my own life to live. So because I was trying to save someone else's life, I almost forgot to save my own. Last one. Counseling. The best thing I could have ever done in my childhood. Best thing. Counseling, as in talking about my emotions, talking about what's going through my mind. The best thing ever. When my parents were going through a divorce that, that spring semester, I decided to, um, one day, like I said, I just woke up and I'm like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of waking up and not wanting to live. I'm tired of just, just being numb and just crying all the time. And I'm tired of having headaches and all that. I'm tired of it. So I am like, just going to walk to this place that someone told me once. So I went in. I just, I, I'm not sure how I got the guts, but I, just, I walked in. I could have called easily. I could have called. But I know, Naomi had to walk. So I walked in, um, and yeah, I want to make my first appointment. Um, uh, and she gives me a gift for some of my information. And then she uh, she hands me a, a post and she says, write two reasons why you want um, to go to concert. And I'm like, I'll be honest. The first one, family problems. Second one, I was thinking about writing it, but I'm like, yo, just write it. So I want to be happy. I I wanted to be happy. I'm pretty sure that's all, like, all that we want. I wanted to be happy. I was tired of just feeling sad all the time and not knowing how to deal with it. So that was the best day of my life because that was the day that I, I, I saved my soul. So I, after my first session, I went to my first session and all I did was talk. Like, I was talking about my problems. Yo. I was talking about my problems. 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 Usually I'm, 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 not, I'm sure like, I'm not the only one who feels like this, but we don't talk about emotions in my family. Emotions are, sh yo, chill. Like, you can't talk about that. That's not, you don't do that. So I, ever since then, I, I became more familiar with how to deal with my emotions, and that's why. And I would talk about emotions, whether they're good, actually, whether they're just emotions. There's no good or bad in this mind. Emotions are emotions. They make us who we are, and that's simply a fact. You, you, you go through one, because I'm pretty sure we all want to go through the, the happy emotions. Happiness, we want to enjoy that. But when it comes to being sad or terrified, you don't want to go there. But once you experience that, you already know how it feels. So when it comes back again, you know how to deal with it. So it, it's it, it, it's one thing I definitely learned from the concept. And so what did I learn from um, each of those five moments?
now they're going to be able to reach out to everybody. There's always going to be a group of people that are going to be with me for whatever reason it is. A reason that I don't have to know. Because, it's, again, it's not my problem. I've done the best that I can to be myself. It's up to people whether or not you want to appreciate my presence or acknowledge me. So I learned that from me. Heartbreak. I learned that sometimes being in pain can cause you can cause you to cause pain to others. Throughout that stage of both me going through heartbreak, I, I also had some problems with another um, friendship and I realized I'm like, damn, I'm hurting people, man. And that's because I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm in pain and I, I I kinda forgot about damn, there's other people out there too, you know? So I also learned that it's important to acknowledge that to also say that to yourself, like, hey, come on, man, um, you got it. Slow it down, come on, take it easy on me. And counseling. I learned how to be self-patient with myself, with whatever I'm going through. Just have patience with myself, but whatever it is, it's going to take time. Um, allow myself to feel, to feel every bit of whatever it wants to be. Though at the moment I'm probably not going to want to, but I, I learned that we have to value happiness the same way, or we have to value sadness the same way we value happiness because they're emotions and that's how humans are. And I can't change being a human, I, not that I know how to do it. If any of you know how to do it, then I know. I, I may want to be a dog one day. <laughs> um, so I, I learned how to appreciate every every emotion. I learned how to be self-honest with myself. Whatever I'm going through, um, own it. Own it. Don't, don't lie to yourself. Um, never doubt my capabilities. Um, never doubt what I, my creations and, and what I do. And I also learned how to trust myself. How to trust that if, if I survive the now, I can survive the later. And if I survive today, I can survive tomorrow. I need to trust that at some point it's gonna, it's gonna, I'm gonna get through it. When I don't know, but it's, I'm gonna get through it. So that's what I've learned from those five, five defining moments. There was one day I was listening to a podcast. I'm not sure which one, but I've never forgotten this. It was years ago. The person has said, you don't truly enjoy something until you share it. If you think about it, if you buy something, you know, usually this is what us women do, but if you men, I have a, I have a person who knows men, like, hey, look at what I got. You know, I, but we usually, hey, girlfriend, look, I got this. And you would really enjoy it, that feeling. But for you men that probably don't do that, you, you also share it because once you wear it, I mean, you're not going to enjoy the um, clothing if it's sitting there. Once you share it, it's when you really, hey, I'm rocking this. It's so <laughs> stuff, you know? Um, so you never really truly enjoy something until you share it. And that's why I think sharing is so important. That's why I share the, I share the knowledge, or at least my knowledge, part of me. Because I, I, I think it's important to people's growth, to people's growth. And, and we're, because of that, I truly believe that we are interdependent. We live in one planet and that's, we're not getting away unless, I'm not sure unless what, but we're not getting away at this one ball. So all we got is us. So I, I think sharing knowledge is extremely important for everybody's growth. And the way I shared is, I created a website, Live Elsie. If you guys want to check it out at some point. Um, means I, there I share my photography. I share emotions on paper, which is basically just me going ranting about how I feel about certain things. Um, I, I share my um, journals from trips and a couple of other stuff. I also have a YouTube channel where I um, uploaded some videos from my travel in Italy. I, I shared on the blogs, the daily blogs. And um, that's, those two are, are, are one way I share. And I also love talking to people as you can tell. <laughs> And um, so, for those of you who know, have known me for either a semester, a year, and who 
or who, who I've shared a personal conversation with or intimate conversation with, raise your hand. Okay. So, for those of for those people who, who raised their hand, um, raise your hand if um, you um, if you have felt inspired by me somehow, that influenced you somehow. Thank you guys so much. 